Okay, uh, ladies, so we're going into the launch of our period poverty campaign. And before we officially open it by Miss Larry, Mary Lou MacDonald, I just want to have a quick um, talk about how this campaign was started. So through our um, initial website, we had volunteers, we have a form and it has, if you want to volunteer, you have to fill it in. And um, again, me chasing my tail, I never got to get on to any of the volunteers. So Michelle, our secretary, Claire, got on to a lot of volunteers recently and she set up a Zoom meeting. And through that Zoom meeting, we were um, we had about 15 or 16 on that night. And I threw out exactly what ideas and it was like just throwing at the people, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, and women being women, amazingly came up with the idea. So Sue started our team, and we got into period poverty. And the reason I really wanted to do something about this campaign is A, working on down at the GPO, you see so many women coming to us, do you have pads, do you have a hygiene pack? A woman, especially a rough sleeper, at the end of the night, when she's in a tent, can get her periods in the middle of the night, she's no patch, she's no nothing. So I had to think of some kind of a survival pack for these women. And also going into direct provision centres, hearing the stories that there is not enough period pads, sanitary pads, hygiene wipes, anything for these women. So we got together. And it's after taking a couple of months, oh no, about six weeks, yeah, about six weeks, got together for this campaign. But today we're officially going to launch the campaign. Um, it is a great honour to have you here. Mary Lou MacDonald is the leader of Sinn Féin and Chok Tadala, have I said that right? <laughs> Chok Tadala for the Dublin Central constituency. Mary Lou is married to Martin and they have two young children. She's proud to represent the people of Dublin Central where she has a reputation for hard work and championing the needs of her constituency both locally and nationally. You're very welcome this morning, Mary Lou. So thank you very, very much for that very kind uh, invitation. Although my two young children are now 18 and 15. So they'd probably they'd have something to say. They'd say, Ma, don't be saying we're young. Um, so can I first of all just say uh, thank you so much, um, all of you, uh, Muslim sisters uh, of ERA, for this wonderful invitation. And I was saying to Lorena, I was in Mayo of course, I would be in Mayo when they beat us in the football. Um, and I'm just delighted that I got back on time to be here with you uh, this afternoon for this very important launch because period poverty is all too common right across Ireland. And the experience of not having enough money to afford tampons or pads, all of the things that you need for a safe and hygienic period really shouldn't be an issue for any of us in the year 2021. But still, every day, women and girls across the country feel the stress, the embarrassment, sometimes the shame of having their period without the products that they require. Research shows that Irish women and girls spend an average of about 121 euro each year on their period. So that includes buying tampons, pads, but also things like pain relief, like painkiller tablets. And for many people who are on very low uh, incomes are living in very difficult circumstances, whether in direct provision or experiencing homelessness, that's money and resources that they simply don't have. And all of us are aware of that. But it's not limited just to, to those of us experience, experiencing extreme poverty. Because the reality is that period poverty can affect women and girls in any town or village in Ireland from all backgrounds and from all walks of life. From schoolgirls experiencing their first period who are anxious that they might bleed through their uniform because their family couldn't afford to provide them with the products that they need or to women whose wages just can't stretch to the menstrual products they need without crossing off another item on their grocery list. Not being able to have a hygienic period can cause huge emotional upset and distress, and it can also harm women and girls' health by causing health complications such as infections. 
So period products, friends, aren't luxury items. They're essential healthcare and hygiene products. And all girls and women who need them should be and must be able to access them. Having a safe, hygienic and dignified period shouldn't be limited to any privileged few. It should be the experience and the right of each and every one of us. A study by Plan International in 2018 found that 50% of teenage girls in Ireland have experienced period poverty at some point. That's an astonishing uh, figure. 10% had resorted to using unsuitable items to manage their period, like newspapers, rags, toilet roll. Almost two thirds of schoolgirls said they had missed lessons on days when they were having their period. I think these figures are shocking and they expose the reality of how common these issues are. And just because people rarely feel able to talk about these things openly doesn't mean that this is not a daily reality across our country. Women heading up single parent households can be particularly at risk of experiencing period poverty, as well as our women and girls in our traveller community, uh, women and girls experiencing homelessness, women from ethnic minorities, many women and girls who are refugees seeking asylum and status, members of migrant communities can also be especially affected. And Lorraine mentioned the experience within direct provision, and I think it's worthy of particular mention, because women living in direct provision are often unable to buy their own products due to restrictions on their ability to work, to earn, and they can request products from direct provision centres, but many certainly have told me that they feel that this undermines their sense of personal privacy and dignity. And they also have raised concerns that the products they receive are very often of the lowest of the low quality. So I think much more needs to be done now to break down cultural, language barriers, all barriers, in order to bring information and resources to women and girls in migrant communities in an accessible way. Too often we can feel uncomfortable talking about our periods. There can be a sense of embarrassment or shame at discussing these things that are considered women's uh, problems. But that really shouldn't be the case. So we have to very consciously, I think, end the stigma or shame around our health, around women's health. We need to talk about our issues if we're going to tackle them together. And that is why, my friends, I so warmly welcome the campaign that Muslim Sisters of Era launched today, because it's through campaigns like this that we can break that stigma and have the conversations that need to be had. This campaign, as Lorraine has described, will see women and girls given survival kits, I like that term, safe period kits with everything that they need for a safe hygienic period. And this will make a real material difference to these girls and women. They will also, I understand, receive fact-checked fact and evidence-based health information in a range of different languages to help women and girls understand their bodies and indeed their health needs. And I think this will be a vital project for empowering women and girls about their menstrual health and in breaking down barriers around stigma and lock, lack of knowledge. So I want to commend each and every one of you who's been working to bring this important project about. I of course wish you only the greatest of success in your campaign because it is sisters in acts of solidarity like this that each of us makes our own huge difference to the lives of women and girls and makes a major step towards inclusion and fairness and dignity in Ireland. I believe that together we can work towards a more equal society. I believe we can live in that society together, a place in which women and girls live safely and live with dignity. And so I am honoured and delighted to be asked to launch this important campaign here with you this afternoon. Gurumila Mahagwiv, Gunairi Liv, I wish you the very best of success and I salute again the incredible work that you do uh, for those on the margins uh, and for people who need an ear and a heart, a hand up um, and to be given a chance 
and to be heard. Your work is wonderful, and this, this campaign is a logical and such a valuable extension of that. Thank you again. And I now officially, I don't know how I launched this. Uh, I launched, I hereby launched the good ship, the good ship period poverty campaign. Thank you so much uh, again. And thank you again, uh, friends, for inviting me this afternoon. Thank you.